What if your worst fear became reality? If the scariest theories were no longer a theory? What if the worst case scenario was now upon us? These are the questions that the first scene in The Last of Us Episode 2 tackles. If you haven't watched my video on the horrifying first scene of The Last of Us in Episode 1, please check that out and then come back to this video. The scene starts by taking us to where possibly the infection originated from, Indonesia. Here we see a woman eating lunch and two military officers come looking for her to have her escorted to a different location. She begins to wonder if she has done something wrong and if she's the right person that they are looking for. She is quickly informed by the officer that she has committed no crimes and we get confirmation of her identity. She is Ipu Ratna, the professor at the University of Indonesia who specializes in mycology. Mycology is the branch of biology concerned with the study of fungi. Later we see the location she is taken to which translates to the Ministry of Health, Republic of Indonesia. As soon as they arrive, the professor is asked to examine an specimen and encouraged to make her own conclusions without any input from the scientists in the location. With a quick look, she is able to determine that the sample is a cordyceps. This is a mind-altering fungi which was mentioned by Dr. Newman in the first episode. Cordyceps, Aspergillus, any one of them could become capable of burrowing into our brains and taking control not of millions of us, but billions of us. She then asks why they're using a chemical dye called chlorosol and is told that the sample comes from a human body. She quickly scoffs and chuckles even, disregarding what the officer just said, and she states one known fact throughout all humanity so far, that cordyceps cannot survive in a human host. As we previously covered, we know that cordyceps cannot survive in a human host as the human temperature is between 97 degrees and 99, and cordyceps can only survive when their host temperature is below 94 degrees. The only way to do this is if they ever evolved and build a resistance to the newer heat. It is after this moment that we begin the downward spiral of the scene, and when we will finally realize that the end is upon us. You can then see the fear in the officer's eyes, as he already knows that in fact, this sample did come from a human. We then see the professor being taken to examine the human subject. She analyzes the bite mark and sees that that's where the disease originated from. She begins to analyze the mouth of the subject in which she quickly realizes that there is cordyceps in there already, which confirmed the theory that indeed, cordyceps can now survive in human hosts. We are then taken into a room in which the officer explains how it all started. We get confirmation that this took place 30 hours ago, and that a normal woman at a flower and grain factory goes violent and attacks the other employees. Once authorities were unable to retain her, they had to execute her. We learned that in the process of retaining her, other employees were bitten as well, and they were taken into custody for observation. However, soon after, they had to be executed as they started showing signs of transformation. We get confirmation that 14 workers are already missing, hence any of those 14 could be subject 1, or perhaps all of them are already affected. You can see how the professor is unable to cope with this realization as she begins to shake in fear and she slowly starts to become aware of what the future holds for this world. The officer starts to ask her how to fix it, if there's any cure, medicine, how can they survive this? And then, we are finally told the horrifying truth. We get confirmation of what Dr. Newman stated in the 1968 interview. And there are no treatments for this, no preventatives, no cures. They don't exist. It's not even possible to make them. That's right. There is no medicine and there is no cure. As the panicking officer worries, he asks what they should do. And the professor with now a face that has come to full terms what this reality now holds for the human race. In order for humanity to have a possibility of survival, the entire city and everyone in it has to be destroyed. If you watch the entire show or even just episode 1, you would already know at this point that the fungi infection did spread worldwide. Knowing that and looking at the doctor's face, it makes me wonder, did they immediately affect this plan or at this point was it even too late? Much like the first scene in episode 1, humans just have to accept that when it comes to these mutations, there will come a time when there will be no cure, no medicine, that humans simply we lose. However, as the show has shown us, there will always remain one thing that we humans can cling to. Much like in Pandora's box, we will always have hope. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe for more.